All right, these problems that I call the number game are extremely important later in the course and um, in generally in advanced algebra, especially when factoring polynomials. Um, the whole game is you're looking for two numbers that add to be a certain number and multiply to be a certain number. There's a lot of different techniques and methods for finding these two numbers. I'll share my method and hope that you kind of develop a method similar, but that fits your styles. In this first example, we're looking for two numbers that add to be 15 and multiply to be 54. Okay, there's some important things to recognize from this information. First thing, the multiplication is positive, meaning the numbers must have the same sign. The two numbers we're looking for then are either both positive or both negative. That's the only way to multiply two numbers to get a positive number. They have to have the same sign, so that's important. So we know they both have the same sign, either both positive or both negative. The second thing is the addition is positive. So to have two numbers of the same sign and have them add to a positive number, they both must be positive numbers. So before we start any kind of work, we know that these are both positive numbers, and that's an important trick. The first thing to do is to focus on all the possible multiplications that multiply to be your number. In this case, we're looking for all the pairs that multiply to be 54 which I've done right here. I'll talk about in a second how to create this, but I first want to talk about once you have this, how this helps. It's important that we focus on multiplication because the multiplication pairs, there's a finite number. There's a limited number of those multiplications, so let's just get them all written down. I like writing them down too, so I'm not doing a bunch of stuff in my head and I kind of can check through stuff. Now I have all these pairs, 1 times 54, 2 times 27, 3 times 18, and 6 times 9. These are all the possible multiplications that are both positive that multiply to be 54. Now all I need to do is I need to figure out which of these pairs also adds to be 15. So I'm just going to add these together. That first pair is adds to be 55. That doesn't work. I don't want that. The next pair adds to be a 29. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for them to add to 15. The next pair adds to be a 21. That's not what I'm looking for. The final pair here, 6 plus 9, adds to be 15. So this must be the pair that we're looking for. This is the pair of numbers that are both positive, that they multiply to be 54, and they add to be 15. So the two numbers I'm looking for in this case are 6 is the smaller of the two, and 9 is the larger. So that's generally the process that I use and I think is the most efficient for especially working on harder problems. Um, again, the steps are I analyze the multiplication to figure out if they're two negatives or two positives, or one's a positive or one's a negative. And then I look at the addition to make more decisions about the numbers that I'm looking for. Then, in my actual work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table of all the pairs that multiply to be the multiplication I'm looking for. This is always a finite list, sometimes longer than others, and sometimes it's really short. Then I look through that list and look for the pair of numbers that actually add to what I want them to add to, in this case, 15. All right, let's talk a little bit more about creating this factor table. Now, if you have any troubles with that, there's a couple different methods that we can use. I like using prime factorization because it's a, a tool throughout mathematics that makes life a lot easier for us. So let's talk about this. Okay, I'm looking at 54. The first thing I'm going to do with 54 is I'm going to find the prime factorization of 54. I do that by dividing it by prime numbers until all I get left are primes. And in this case, the prime factorization of 54 is 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, now I'm going to make my factor table. So I'm looking for all the pairs and numbers that multiply to be 54. How I can do this and know that I have a complete list is I'm going to start on the left hand side here and I'm going to go up by 1. I always kind of pre-put here a bunch of stuff. And now I look for these pairings. So for 1, 1 times what is 54? Well, that's always the easiest. It's always 1 times the number I'm looking for, which is 54 right here. Now I come to the question 2. 2 times what is 54? This is where I use my prime factorization. Over here on the prime factorization, I know 2 times something is 54 because 2 shows up right here. In fact, it's 2 times whatever these three threes multiply to be. In this case, it would be 2 times 27. So 27 is the next number in my list. 
now the question becomes, three times what is 54? Or is there this, this three, is three a factor of 54? Well, it is, because in the prime factorization, I see three right here, and it's three times whatever this two times three times three is. And actually, in this case, that is 18 times three. So 18 is the next number on my list here, three times 18 is 54. Again, I'm using this prime factorization. It's making things a lot quicker for me. I don't have to do a bunch of division. And uh, here's for instance. Now I'm looking for four. Is four times something 54? Well, I can't make four from the numbers in my prime factorization. The only way I can make four is a two times two, but I only have one two right here. So four does not have a common factor to multiply to 54. Five, being a prime number, would show up in my prime factorization if it had something that multiplied it to 54, so that doesn't have a common factor to be 54. Six, six does. Here is six, two times three is six, and it would be a six times nine if I multiply these together. So that is my next pairing in my list here. And then I'm gonna move on to seven. Seven's a prime number. It doesn't show up in my prime factorization. Eight um, doesn't show up in my prime factorization. Eight would be a two times two times two if it showed up, but it doesn't. The next number on my list would be nine. I would find that nine times six multiplies to be 54, but nine is already over here on the right-hand side. Whenever that occurs, I know that I'm done. I've completed all, I have all the, the factors that multiply to be 54. So this is my table that I'm, I used.